Next, we'll talk about discrete multi-fidelity optimization. This will be purely in Bowtorch, uh, as it's not currently implemented in the X framework. So you have to move to some of the lower level building blocks here. So with this discrete fidelity notebook, the discrete fidelities will still have a cost associated with them. So if you wanted to use this uh, in a way that you're actively performing simulations and actively performing experiment experiments, and you want to uh, kind of leverage uh, the information from both and uh, you know, run simulations and then move back to running experiments, let the algorithm uh, make that choice, then using multi-fidelity based optimization with these discrete uh, fidelity parameters um, is a good option. Uh, if you want to uh, use something where an ordering isn't quite as clear. Uh, multitask is another option, and there's some tutorials uh, for doing multitask uh, Bayesian optimization uh, where you can stick inside of the X framework. So because of that nuance there, I'll be going over both this discrete fidelity notebook as well as the X multitask uh, notebook. So uh, this is looking similar to the continuous one uh, in many ways. However, we define our discrete fidelities here, in this case 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1.0. Uh, then uh, we'll have our generation of the initial data. Um, however, in this case, we'll be using, uh, again, our discrete fidelities uh, and obtaining the objective uh, functions um, on our initialized data. Uh, and this is for uh, the random samples of the, uh, the fidelities here. We define our fidelity and cost model and inverse cost weighted utility the same. We also have our target fidelity as the maximum again Now, when we use our uh, optimized acquisition function uh, inside of this helper function, uh, we'll pass a fixed features list uh, that corresponds to each of our discrete fidelities. And this is the main difference here. Uh, and then the rest of the op optimization essentially proceeds as it did in the continuous case. And making our final recommendation with uh, the fidelity parameter fixed to the target value. In this case, we were able to optimize it to a value of 3.0 over a cost of 68. Uh, and we can make the same comparison to the expected improvement, which uh, only got to 2.166 uh, using a total cost of 72. Uh, and here are a few examples from the literature of using multiple information sources to reduce the number of expensive ground truth experiments that you need to run. Uh, on the left here, you can see an example where the maximum uh, function value over uh, to repeat campaigns uh, is higher for the same amount of cost by incorporating the cost explicitly into, uh, into the model. And then similarly over here, you can see where there's uh, this expensive RVE ground truth model, and we're using uh, cheaper approximations uh, using other models, these other information sources to uh, reduce the total number of evaluations that need to occur on the expensive ground truth model. Now here transitioning over to the multi-task patient optimization, which is related to uh, the multi-fidelity uh, options. Uh, we're going to use uh, expensive to evaluate online uh, functions. This could be like the actual experiments that you're running that are more expensive and use supporting simulations that are not the same. They'll have some, uh, some noise, some bias, uh, uh, at least in, uh, in real world applications, uh, but they'll be correlated with the experimental values. Um, so this uses a multitask kernel. You can uh, check out this paper uh, for some more information there. Uh, 
we're still going to use the Hartman six function uh, and we will treat, uh, we'll have one be biased relative to another. Uh, and that bias is going to be implemented simply through a piecewise linear function. Um, and uh, we'll uh, kind of arbitrarily impose this idea that the offline observations are less time time consuming than the online observations. So here we'll define a metric class uh, offline, the offline less expensive Hartman six metric. Uh, and we'll define the F function, which returns a float based on the input parameters. And we'll also be using just the uh, the regular Hartman six metric as the online metric. So we'll define a few helper functions. Uh, it will uh, take the following steps. We'll create the search space, specify an optimization configuration, initialize our experiment, uh, and then establish the offline trial type uh, and add our offline metrics. So here we have a noise associated with uh, uh, the observations. Uh, we'll create our search space using range parameter from the developer API with the name, the parameter type, and the lower and upper bounds. We'll make our search space by passing in our parameters. Uh, we'll have our online objective, um, like I said, as the Hartman 6 metric uh, with some noise associated with that objective. We'll create our optimization configuration from the objective and uh, where the objective is going to be minimized. And we'll use a multi-type experiment here, or in other words, multiple uh, types of trials. Uh, and so we define our search space and we say our default uh, trial type is the online type. We'll use a synthetic or dummy runner and pass our optimization configuration in as well. And we'll add a new trial type here, which is the offline trial type, uh, again with a synthetic runner, and uh, add our offline metrics that give these biased estimates of the online ones. So here we're passing, or we're instantiating the offline objective uh, using uh, this uh, name for it, uh, the parameter names that we defined earlier, and the same level of noise uh, for this one. Um, but with the caveat of there being that uh, linear piecewise function applied to it. And we'll add the tracking metric uh, to the experiment um, and assign the trial type of offline to this. Uh, next, we can take a quick look at what the simulator bias actually looks like relative to the online higher fidelity uh, trials. Uh, so here, um, you can see that uh, if there was perfect correspondence between the online and the offline metrics, then it would be a straight line. Uh, but you can see the bias kind of coming into play here uh, with over prediction and then the under prediction. And then finally, we have our actual Bayesian optimization loop. Here we have uh, some of the parameters that define our, our campaign. So we'll initialize it with five online experiments, 20 offline experiments, and then we'll perform uh, five online iterations and 20 offline iterations with three batches. And we'll repeat this three times uh, to uh, help uh, with some of the statistical properties of making comparison, make it a little more statistically reliable. So first, we'll optimize with the online observations only uh, as one of our baselines. Um, so here we have a helper function that runs this loop um, across the number of batches. Uh, it, it gets our Sobel points. It uh, generates uh, a set of uh, generator runs that we can pull trials from uh, 
to get our online experiment uh, and then we'll get our GPEI model uh, during the uh, so that this was using a Sobel model, and then we'll use the actual Bayesian optimization iterations here using our experiment, the existing data, and our search space. Generate the new batch and uh, attach that trial there. So then for the multitask Bayesian optimization, this will involve initialization, fitting the model, generating candidates, launching the offline batch, then updating the model, selecting points for the online batch, updating the model and repeating. Um, so we'll do this in a loop here. In other words, we'll uh, be doing a mix of going from our simulation back to our experiment uh, and, and repeating that loop there. So we have a, a max utility from the Gaussian process model uh, as a function of uh, the model, our experiment, the search space, our generator runs, and the number of candidates that we wish to generate. And we have our running of the actual multitask Bayesian optimization, uh, and we'll uh, track the time uh, as this goes along. So we have our uh, online Sobel points. Um, sorry, first we have our initialization with both online and offline. Then we'll run our online uh, points, offline points um, for all of those, uh, and then attach those. Then we start the Bayesian optimization uh, where we fit the multitask Gaussian process model uh, M here. We find the best points to get our generator run. And we do this uh, with respect to the online task, uh, but then launch them on the offline task. In other words, we uh, generate a bunch thinking, OK, what would be the best for our expensive experiments? Uh, instead of running those expensive experiments, we uh, take a look at running them on the simulations. Uh, we update the model with the new data and then uh, choose the points that have the maximum utility uh, that maximize uh, the acquisition function from the offline batch to then generate the online batch version. So this is uh, could kind of be thought of like in uh, some chemistry and material science uh, discovery tasks where you run a set of simulations and then you down select from those simulations to uh, create your um, candidate list for experimental validation. And you're running this in a loop, uh, all the while using any data that you generate for the simulations and any data that you generate for the experiments while keeping track of the differences between the two in the multitask model. Uh, and you use all of that existing data to uh, run that loop and uh, down select to your uh, experimental candidates. So then we have running uh, both loops here, uh, the online only loop, the multitask Gaussian process loop, uh, and we can compare the results here. And here we have an example from one of the pa papers that was linked in the notebook showing uh, the differences between incorporating uh, these biased uh, noisy simulations uh, for a 10 dimensional search space. On the left hand side, you see where uh, we have leave one out cross-validation results for uh, 20 online experiments over the 10-dimensional search space. And then on the right, the leave one out cross-validation when you add the 100 simulations via the multitask modeling. And that really helps to improve the out-of-sample prediction quality here. 